Hi everybody, welcome back to the kitchen. I'm Jo Michaels, the baking author, and today we're going to do sides. Yeah, I know, sides. Things that everybody is like, but what do I make to go with this? I'm going to show you today. So first thing that we're going to make is some macaroni and cheese, homemade, from scratch. You're going to love it. You don't even have to bake it after you make it. That's my favorite kind. So what we're doing now is I'm just boiling some really salty water to cook my pasta. I like to use rigatoni because of the shape. I think it holds a little more of that beautiful cheese sauce that we're going to make. So I'm going to get this cooked. I am going to get it out and get it back in a bowl and then get my pot back on the stove here and I'll be right back with you guys to walk you through making that awesome awesome cheese sauce okay see you then hi guys I'm back I wanted to give you guys a few little tips and pointers on this you can use any kind of pasta that you want but try to make sure that you get about three cups of it because like cooked measure three cups I think it's about three cups um, it could be any shape so you do you, like I always say in this kitchen, you do you. Make sure that you cook it to about a minute before al dente because it's going to sit after I like drain it. I'm gonna leave a little bit of pasta water in there and pour it in that bowl so it doesn't stick together and drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. There's my timer now. So that's gonna keep it from sticking and it will make it like finish sucking up all that goodness. I'm gonna turn this burner down to about medium. It was on high, obviously, because I was cooking the pasta, and drain this. And then I'm gonna make my cheese sauce right in this bowl. Now I'm not gonna shake this rigatoni at all. I'm just gonna pour it in that bowl right there with that little bit of water that's left and just give it a little shot of that olive oil. It's gonna sit over here and keep cooking while I keep doing what I'm doing. So. Into here I have about five tablespoons of butter. I know it's a lot of butter, but it is what it is. We're gonna put that in there and get it melty. I have my trusty whisk. Now I just have a regular teaspoon, measuring spoon, and I'm just going to sprinkle some flour in here once this butter melts. Come on, butter. What you doing to me? Get all melty. Because we're going to make a quick bechamel type sauce. It's just a cheese sauce, so easy. Not super rich. We're not putting egg yolks in it. So it's just going to have butter, flour, cream, milk, obviously, and then cheese. And my secret to a really great mac and cheese is Rotel. So if you have a big can of Rotel hanging out, grab it. It's going to be so good in here. My seasonings, I used a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon and a half of bacon bits, just regular, any kind of bacon bits you like, you do you, and oh yeah, a teaspoon and a half of chopped dried onion, yum, and about an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Add nutmeg to some pasta, you will never be the same ever. It is absolutely the most delicious thing you've ever tasted. So we're not actually gonna brown this flour, I'm just cooking out the flour taste, like usual. That's about five teaspoons or so. I know, I keep banging on the edge of the pot, but it's sticking to my spoon. And I'm looking for kind of a light consistency, but I still want it to be kind of rooey because that cheese is gonna add some depth of texture. And as far as your cheeses go, again, you do you. I have about three cups and it's a blend of Gruyere, super sharp cheddar, and some Parmesan. So don't use the pre-sliced or pre-shredded stuff because it's coated in a material that, I'm gonna show you this, um, that keeps it from clumping. So it's not gonna make a really good cheese sauce. It'll kind of clob together. So you're looking for like that consistency right there. I don't know if you can see that in the bottom of that pan, but it's a little bit watery because again, that cheese is going to help thicken that up. Now to this, I'm just gonna whisk in my milk. It's two cups of whole milk. Seems like a lot of cheese sauce for that, that amount of noodles, but I love, love a cheesy mac and cheese. 
And again, those noodles are still hot, so they're super thirsty. Once I get them in here, you're gonna see the way that they just soak up all that liquid. It's gonna be amazing. I'll turn this back up to high because I want it to thicken up a little bit. And then I'm gonna start sprinkling my cheese. I'm gonna take it off the heat and I'm gonna start, well, I'm gonna turn it off. And I'm gonna start sprinkling my cheese in a little bit at a time. You don't wanna like blob your cheese in there. It makes a mess. And it just kinda clings to your whisk. So whisky whisking. And I'm not gonna add my seasonings until after I get my cheese in there. You'll have that heat from the, that rotel and then you'll have the nice earthy flavor of the bacon. You got the fats from the cheeses. It's just an amazing, amazing dish. Okay, your cheese sauce should be thickening up. You don't quite want it to come to a boil. And it's gonna have like this consistency. It's still gonna be thin because your cheese is gonna thicken it up and you may have to add some more milk, so keep that in mind. Now you just take your cheese and just sprinkle it in and whisk it around until it melts. <clears throat> Ooh, this is thick already. I actually don't like to use a whisk for this part. I prefer a spoon. I know that seems completely contradictory, but it works better. Just a little more of that cheese. Now your consistency is something like this right now. It's very thick. You may end up having to add some more milk. Maybe not. It will depend on your level of tastiness. Now you can use any cheese that you have in your fridge. I have Gruyere, super sharp cheddar, like I said, and some Parmesan, but you can use Fontina. You can use uh, cream cheese. Yum. It's really good. Uh, you can use mild cheddar. I really like the cheddar-y flavor, so I like to go with like a sharper cheddar. And that Fontina just melts really beautifully. Gruyere is really good in here. Or no, I use Gruyere. Uh, Fontina is really good in here. <laughs> I have my moments. Like I said before, I'd forget my head if it wasn't attached to my body. Now it's gonna kind of clob together right now because the cheese is starting to become cheesy in your mix. It's at this point that you can really let it just sit on the heat for a second and like melt that cheese around. Make sure it's really melting well though because you don't want to have like cheese globules in your mac and cheese. That's gross. Now after I get this cheese in here and melted, I'm going to add my spices. And then we will taste just the cheese sauce for salt. And other things. Remember you're going to get some heat from those tomatoes. So, or Rotel. Okay, the consistency that I have right now is like this. Beautiful little cheese sauce. It's not quite all the way melted, but that's okay. I'm gonna just drop my seasonings in there. There was no salt in this. Before I add the Rotel, I'm going to taste it to make sure that's enough seasoning. You don't really have to use a lot of that bacon because that bacon is really a strong flavor and it will overpower everything else if you're not careful. That is going to need some salt. Now those onion pieces in there, I already have it out. Those onion pieces in there are going to soften up as this sits. So you can bake this. If you're gonna bake it, I would probably stop another minute ahead of time on the rotini or your pasta just before it's before al dente because it will finish baking in the oven. You don't want it to get like huge. It'll absorb too much water and then it'll dry out your, or it'll clump up in your cheese sauce and you'll, you'll have like gross mac and cheese. Mmm, that's so good. That was just enough salt too. I think I added about a half a teaspoon. All right, now I'm gonna add this Rotel. First, I'm gonna drain it. 
And I'm not going to add the whole can, I'm just going to add about half. This is a very big can of Rotel. If you have a regular size can of Rotel, go ahead and dump the whole thing in there. Whoops, a little more than half. Now make sure you mix that into your cheese sauce before you add your pasta back in. I will show you what this looks like. I know, it, it's amazing. Looks like that. Can you see it? It's all yummy. Now we just take our pasta, which should not be stuck together, it should freely just wiggle around, and dump it in the pot, and then just mix it in with that cheese. Now again, if you're doing more, more traditional mac and cheese, you may want to pop this into the oven, put a little breadcrumb topping on there, it's all good. I like my mac and cheese super cheesy, so that's what you're going to see here, like super cheesy. And if you want, you can like get crazy with it, throw some spinach in there. Once you have that cheese sauce made, there is no limit. So you do you, as I like to say. Gonna grab another spoon so I can get in here and get some of those tomatoes. You guys, look at that. Doesn't that look amazing? Whoops. Mmm. Mmm. Those green chilies in that Rotel just add a little bit of heat. Mmm. I can taste that nutmeg in the back of my mouth just a little bit. It's not overwhelming. And, oh, those cheeses just blend together so beautifully. The Gruyere is all creamy. Have that sharpness of the cheddar and the Parmesan gives it that lovely aged flavor. Man, you guys are going to love this and so is your family. So it tastes a little bit like a loaded mac and cheese. I got that bacon too. Mm. So good. So there's your first side. And the next one that's coming up is Brussels sprouts. I know, I know, some of you like them, some of you don't. But if you follow this recipe, I promise even your pickiest eater will eat them. Okay? I'll see y'all in a little bit. Be back. Hey guys, welcome to part two of Sides. Brussels sprouts. I know, everybody's so excited. Seriously, if you've never had Brussels sprouts, you're missing out, but this is one of my most requested recipes. So, I'm going to just cut the ends off the Brussels sprouts and then hack them in half like this. I'm going to turn my pan on medium low-ish. You, if you're using gas, you want to go about medium. I'm going to make myself a little pile of Brussels sprouts. Probably be better if I had a bowl. Let's get a bowl! Alright, we're just going to chuck them right in there. I like to do this over here so I can just sweep everything into the sink. It saves me time. Did not quite get all of the bottom off that one. Now you're going to lose a couple of leaves off the outside, that's fine. Let them go. They are not important in the grand scheme of things. What's going in these? <laughs> My husband and I took a trip to Miami. We had a great dinner one night. It was a steak restaurant, and I ordered a slide of Brussels sprouts because I love them. They're a little bit like cabbage-y flavor, but not quite. So anyway, I guess I tried. So um, I ordered a slide of Brussels sprouts, and I tasted them, and I thought, wow, these are phenomenal. I've never had Brussels sprouts that tasted like this. So I came home and played around with the recipe, trying to match it pretty close. And I ended up getting darn near bang on. So these are similar to Brussels sprouts made by a five-star restaurant down in Miami. Not Michelin star, just five-star. Which I suppose is still pretty good. If you have it, use bacon or pancetta. I could not find pancetta. I didn't want to use bacon. It's a little fatty for my taste today. I am going to use a little bacon grease, but that's neither here nor there. That's starting to get warm. I want to put all of these in there at the same time. You can blanch these ahead of time. Only blanch them for about two or three minutes. 
because you don't want them cooked, you just want them kind of a little soft. It depends on how much you want your Brussels sprouts cooked. And leave that one whole because it's pretty small. Looks like there might have been a worm in this one. Yep, there he is. Get out of there, worm. Brussels sprouts are vegetables just like anything else. We grew them one year at our farm. Man, they were so good. They grow really strange though. They grow on this long stick and it can get like this tall. But as they grow, they start out as like tiny little buds and then you just pop the leaves off under the bud once it starts to grow and you get some pretty good sized Brussels sprouts. You can pick them pretty much all season. But they are phenomenal. My kids actually like them. Yes, my kids will eat Brussels sprouts. I know, so strange. I've had people come up to me in restaurants and ask how I get my kids to eat certain things. And I'm like, I tell them it's good. So just tell your kids it's good. Maybe mask it. This is a little bit sweet, so they might like it. Mine sure do. They said these are the best Brussels sprouts I've ever made ever. All right, we're gonna really quickly just chop this. I have some uh, prosciutto. Like I said, you really want to use bacon or pancetta. Prosciutto was all I could find this week. Pandemic. It's not ideal, but I do have a big container of bacon grease because I'm Southern. We're gonna throw a little bit of that in there for some flavor. Just a rough chop. You do not have to be super specific with this, but it's great, great flavor to this. So delicious. We're just going to throw that in there. In big chunks, just kind of break it up with your hands. We're not trying to be picky. I am going to use salt and pepper in this too. You're going to want some honey and some whole roasted unsalted almonds. Okay. If you have bad leaves on the back, just pop them off. See, the Brussels sprouts come out pretty clean. You can even leave the worms in there. I mean, Percy, am I right? Yeah, I wouldn't actually do that. My husband would have a fit if he saw me say that on YouTube. Oh, that's funny. I can imagine his face now because I am the cook that will cut the mold off the cheese and use the cheese on the inside because all cheese molds anyway it's how they age it and he does not like that at all he will not touch anything that I put with cheese that he doesn't know I just bought so pretty funny funny story all right I'm gonna actually put my knife away because I don't need it anymore and I'm gonna get some almonds out let me get a stir my pan around and make sure you use a pan that you have a lid that will fit this lid was not made for this pan but it works and what I'm looking for from this prosciutto is just the hammy flavor just that nice pork flavor in my Brussels sprouts if you use pancetta let it get crispy dude dude they never tasted anything like it so just a couple of handfuls of almonds like maybe a cup this is going to be loud so i'm going to do this i'll be right back with you okay i'm back you want to cut your almonds so they look about like that they're still in pretty good size pieces yum not totally obliterated this is new honey so i'm going to have to open it i thought it says lift here to pull never works it always rips off and you still have to dig at the stupid tabs to get it started oh then what's the point right this is like the macaroni and cheese box says press here to open you ever try to do that mm-hmm oh my Okay, 
I'm just drawing some of the moisture out of this prosciutto. Really wish I had some pancetta. It'd be so good. But I don't, so we're winging it. We're doing what we can. All right. Spoon for the bacon grease. I have some lovely little bacon bits down in there. You can see them. It's going to add some much needed fat to this dish. Because the prosciutto doesn't really have fat. And this is all the oil we're going to use. There's no olive oil, no any other kind of oil. It's just the bacon grease for the lubrication of the pan. So with that. But it's about a tablespoon. Not a lot. Not a little, but not a lot. And I think we're ready to just cook it here. I'm going to inch my heat up to five on my cooktop. Mmm, that smells amazing. Wish I could just hold it up and let you guys sniff it. We're going to be adding a little bit of water to this pan. That's what the lid is for, is to kind of steam these Brussels sprouts down just a smidge. All right, that's cooked quite a bit. This should crisp up in this bacon grease too. So I'm going to just dump my Brussels sprouts in there. Give them a nice toss around with that grease and that prosciutto. One pan side. Takes a few minutes longer than other sides, but mm, so worth it. Get your kids eating those Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I'm just going to let that cook for a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to kind of clean some of this stuff up, so I will be right back with you guys. Okay guys, now we're going to add an eighth of a cup of water to our pan. Don't worry, it will cook away. And crank the heat up to medium high and put a lid on it. And what we're going to do right now, the reason that I'm doing this, is to just flash steam those Brussels sprouts so they get just a little bit soft. You don't want them to be like mush in your mouth because that's gross, but you want them a little softer than like you crunch and they go crunch. You know what I mean? We're going to let that steam for probably two minutes, maybe three, and then I'm going to whip the lid off, crank the heat up to high, and we're going to really get rolling. Okay, your Brussels sprouts should have been steaming for two or three minutes. We're going to pop the lid off, turn the heat up to high, and then really get to cooking. So now is when we're going to brown those Brussels sprouts down. They're going to keep cooking. They should not be soft yet. They should still be hard. Well, not hard, but slightly hard. Just like a semi or a chub. Turn them around, make sure that I get them moving, kind of get them pressed down to the bottom of the pan because this is where they're going to brown, like I said. We're going to also add our salt and pepper right now. I'm going to go easy on the salt at first, but then once I taste one, I'll adjust the salt from there. It needs a lot of pepper, so be prepared for that. Gives us a nice pow. You can use any kind of salt you want. I'm using just a little coarse salt. It's about an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm going to put that right there because I'm going to need it again. And then I'm going to grab my coarse ground black pepper. And I'm probably going to put a teaspoon. A teaspoon. One full teaspoon in there. Yum. I don't want to mess with that too much because those are browning on the bottom of the pan. And we do have our heat turn up to high. It's one of the big pluses of not using like olive oil or any other kind of oil. You're really getting that seared. I can smell it. Time to stir it. Whew, they did not brown up quite as much as I wanted. But that's okay. That one looks beautiful actually. But if I'm not careful, they will overcook while I'm trying to brown them. So I'm trying really hard to get these seared off as quickly as humanly possible. I still have to add my almonds and my honey. The honey is going to give it this little bit of sweetness. And then the almonds are going to give it that lovely crunch. As well as if you have pancetta, that's going to give it crunch too. But it's a different kind of crunch. And the almonds add a little of that flavor that you really want on the back of your tongue. I'm just working on smushing these down into the bottom of the pan. Yes, I am the jerk who will stand here and make sure 
most of these are brown before they come out. So, huzzah to me. And you can see that prosciutto is starting to get crusty too because it's frying in that bacon grease. So, while it's not bacon and it's not quite pancetta, it does have a nice flavor. It's very subtle, but it does have a nice flavor. That bacon grease will really kick it up that extra notch. Thank you, Emerald, for that visual. Kick it up one more notch. Yeah, I know. He uses that. Love him. Okay, these are browning beautifully now. I'm going to show you what they look like. Like that. And I'm just going to give them a stir around so I don't want them to burn. Burnt Brussels sprouts are no good. But brown Brussels sprouts are amazing. So now I'm going to pour in my honey. I do not measure. Use about an eighth of a cup. More or less on you. You decide. You do you. This is your side dish. And dump that almond in there. Yum. And then I'm going to give it a stir. Now this doesn't have to cook much longer. Those Brussels sprouts are perfect. They're not overdone. They're not underdone. Some of that prosciutto got crispy. Mmm, I wish you guys could smell what's coming off this pan right now. Alright, taking it off the heat. We don't need the heat anymore. If I don't move it, you can leave it there if you have gas, but if I don't move it, it is going to burn a residual. Mmm, look at that. Doesn't that look yummy? So yummy. And now I'm going to grab a fork and grab a quick taste and see if it needs some more salt. Probably does because it's supposed to be sprouts, but I'm not trying to be picky. Mmm, that's perfect. It's really hot. <laughs> of course it is. I just took it out of a scalding hot pan. Mmm. Mm -mm. It needs no more salt. The salt from the prosciutto and the salt from the bacon grease and that little pinch I put in there, they were enough. So, okay, guys, there are Brussels sprouts. I am going to throw these on a plate and grab a photo so you can see what they look like all plated up. And we will do another side later. So I will see you guys in just a few more minutes. Ta-ta for now. Hey guys, welcome back to the awesome sides edition of my show. Today we have already done mac and cheese and some prosciutto, Brussels sprouts, not ideal, but pancetta, you know, we'll get it eventually, pandemic. And now we are going to do a stovetop egg and spinach side. This is a little bit Mexican inspired, so hang with me here. It's going to have a little bit of heat to it. It's going to have some cheesy goodness in it. And you guys are going to love it. So I'm going to put, set this right here over like medium low heat. And then I'm going to toss some olive oil in. Because the first thing that we have to do is wilt the spinach. Now I have some residual heat going on here because I made Brussels sprouts from a few minutes ago. But I have this lovely organic baby spinach. Pre-washed, ready to use. And I'm going to toss it into this pan just so it will wilt. And I'm being generous. I'm putting a couple of really good handfuls. Because as much as you put in there, it's going to like wilt down to about half that. So keep that in mind. If y'all see me wiggling my nose today, yell at me. I've been trying to stop that. It's these glasses, I always feel like they're falling off my face. So just going to press those spinach leaves down in that pan. I'm going to grab a plate to slide those onto here in a minute. Shouldn't be a lot of spinach leaves once it's done. I'm going to rinse these off because I use them for Brussels sprouts. No spinach. And then while that's wilting, I'm going to cut this onion really, really fine dice. So slicing it as 
small as I can this direction. I left a little bit of the root on to kind of hold it together. And then slicing it really skinny in this direction. This has kind of a huevo ranchero feel to it. If you like your Mexican food for breakfast, you know what I'm talking about. My whole family just adores Mexican food. We eat it all the time. There's a lovely place near our house that we like to go. The people are super nice. They don't speak very good English, but the food is fantastic. So locally support. That's kind of what we try to do. Okay, I'm going to use about half of that half of a red onion. So I guess about a quarter of a red onion. You can age 60 onion if you want. Remember, this is your kitchen. You call the shots. You do you. Where are my tongs? There they are. And I'm just going to turn this. You can see it's already starting to wilt really well. So the big leaves are on the bottom here. I may add just a touch of salt to this to draw that moisture out faster. Salt draws out moisture. This is why slugs die. So let's sprinkle ink it with a little salt. Not a lot, just a smidge. We will be putting salt and pepper and other spices in as we go. All right, now I'm going to whisk together my eggs. Well, mix together my eggs. I only whisk every now and then. When it really needs some air, I whisk. When it does not really need a lot of air, I use a fork. Ha! Fork. Three eggs, and I'm just whisking them around. I'm going to add that heavy cream to them in just a second. Okay, that was about an eighth of a cup of heavy cream. I'm going to whisk that in here with my eggs. Now I'm going to add a little cheese. Okay, a lot of cheese. I just had this shredded Mexican blend cheese. We are tossing that right in there because we're also going to put our spinach in here. And I don't really want raw onions, so I'm going to toss those in with the spinach. I think right now. Yeah, that's cooking down nicely. Let's toss these onions in here, just to cook the rawness off them. I had a big piece, just to cook the rawness off them, so they're not quite so crunchy. They are cut really small, so they're going to cook really fast. You can see, even though I'm on like medium low, my pan's still getting pretty hot. But again, that's because cooktop it retains a lot of heat. Those onions are sharp. They make my eyes water. <laughs> Again, I don't want to cook them through. I just want to kind of cook them down a little bit. Maybe a little more cheese. That's probably good. Don't go overboard on the cheese. There are no beans in this, which means it's not exactly huevos rancheros. But, ooh, I do love me some black beans. This is a side, not a mains. You want to do it as a mains you can make this with some whole milk or some cream or some half and half and you can put it into a pie dish and throw it in the oven and make yourself a frittata frittatas are so easy and yummy all right those onions are cooked down just a smidge kind of looks like this in the pan i'm just going to dump those here so they can cool for just a minute because if i add this hot stuff to those eggs it's going to start to cook them don't want that to happen yet. 
This is such a beautiful fluffy egg side. I know a lot of people use eggs for like they only use them for a main dish, but I like them for a side dish too. They have a lot of protein in them. Whew. That is hot. I'm gonna turn that down even more to like one and a half, two. I'm gonna go ahead and add my butter. I wanna make sure this is over like low heat. You don't wanna super cook it. Add my butter to my pan. Now I'm going to swap these for a plastic rubber spatula because I want to kind of cook my eggs around and I don't want to destroy them with this. So I'm going to grab a rubber spatula. still steaming spinach into my eggs and just get it moving around immediately so I don't get big egg clods. Those are nasty. Okay. Now you should have something that looks like this. Now we're going to throw our spices in. Okay. We are going to do cumin, 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 cumin. A good hearty dose of cumin. Some chili powder. Just a little of that. I have got white pepper. We're going to use that because it's a little milder than black pepper. And I am going to put a tiny dash of cayenne in there because it is amazing. Now salt. My pepper is going to make me sneeze. A little garlic powder. Not much. Just sprinkle it over top. And some regular black pepper. About an eighth of a teaspoon. You already had all that other pepper in there. It's going to be a little spicy, but it's really not terrible. So my butter has melted. You do not want it to brown. Just melt it. I'm going to mix my spices in there really well. I wish I could taste this before I cook it, but alas, I cannot. So if you cook it and you find you want more salt, add more salt. If you find you want less salt, leave some out. I'm just going to pour that in there and make sure everything is distributed nicely. This is where your spatula is going to come in handy. Just kind of move it around. We're looking for it to cook but not clop up. You're going to let that cheese melt too, so that'll be yummy. Going to have a lot of melty cheese in this glorious little side here. Now you want to bump your heat up just a little to like medium low. As you can see, if you move it, the eggs are starting to cook. That's what we're looking for. Those eggs starting to cook. And I'm just spreading it back out, just giving it a mix to the middle. Make sure you cook this through. Because if you do not cook it through, you run the risk of getting salmonella poisoning, and we don't want that, right? Right. Trust me, you do not want salmonella poisoning. I've had it. Everything shoots out of you in two directions. It's no fun. And you can't keep anything down this way, so they give you stuff to go the other way to keep this from coming out and then they give you stuff to go here to keep the other from coming out. Yes. Not fun at all. You can also divide this into ramekins and bake it. But I have something in my oven right now. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cook it stove top like I usually do. I have trash. I have trash and if I don't throw this away I'm going to sit here and play with my food. Terrible idea. 
worry in your food is never good. So let me throw this away. Okay guys, I'm back. I'm gonna show you what's going on in this pan, kind of what the edges look like so you know what to expect. And that's how this should look. So kind of keep it off the edges, like pull them back as you can. And you're just gonna let it kind of cook. Your butter on the bottom is going to start to brown at this point because we have inched that heat up just a little bit. I'm hoping that I get to flip this and it doesn't fall apart. It does fall apart on me quite often because of the cheese in there. But let's cross our fingers that it holds in there. And if I were a little more confident, I would probably flip it. But like I said, I'm not a professional chef, so we're winging it. And I'm going to use my long spatula for this because it works better on eggs, I find. That's kind of what you were doing in the beginning was kind of getting those eggs down in the middle to cook. We're just kind of moving it around a bit. I can see whenever I pull it apart that the bottom is getting solid, which is what I want. Yes, you're baking on your stovetop. Isn't it fantastic? I can tell whenever I pull the edges back that it's not quite ready to flip because it's still tearing just a little bit. When it's ready to be flipped, <clears throat> those edges are going to hold together really well. So we shall see. Isn't this exciting? Now if you want a more huevos rancheros type flavor, you can add black beans to this or kidney beans. Um, and you'll get that lovely huevos rancheros. If you want to take it the last two or three minutes and pop it in the oven, put some tortilla strips on top or some tortilla crisps. That would be good too. But this is delicious. Let me get my long handled spatula or long spatula. Looks like this. If you're doing anything except flipping burgers, this is what you want to use because everything else pretty much tears crap up, which is why I switched to my gentle spatula a minute ago. We're going to go for it here in just a minute. It's starting to solidify. I know it's tempting to reach over here and turn up that heat because I almost did it myself just now, but don't. Okay, you don't want this to burn. Burning is bad. But while you're waiting for this to cook, like if you're making dinner too, you can just go do other things. You don't really have to sit here and watch it. It's just awful on cooking right now, so I'm kind of watching it. Probably not good for it that I'm standing here watching it. <laughs> <laughs> my edges are looking a little bit dry and it's smelling like toasty cheese so I'm thinking it might be ready to flip over it feels pretty sturdy now I'm just going to use this special to kind of help me flip it so and it broke of course it broke but that's okay I'm going to smash it and wrangle it back together and it should look something like this. Of course, if you got yours turned over totally, it won't have this area, but it should look something like that. Now you are just going to leave it. You can even inch your heat down a bit. Just leave it until it's set in the middle and you're good to go. I'm going to put mine down on two and just walk away. So I'll be back with you guys when this is done cooking. We will have a bite. I will tell you approximately how many minutes it took to finish cooking. And I'm going to clean, kind of clean up here, and then we'll get to rolling, okay? Okay, you guys, I'm back. It took about five minutes for this to finish, and how you can tell it's done is if you press the outside, and it's firm, and then you press the inside, once it feels like the outside, you can tell that it's done. It will be very pushbacky. So we're going to turn that off. Oh, broke it. Do my best to invert this onto a plate. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It would help if you're better at flipping things in the pan <laughs> than I am. Yeah, mine are kind of broken apart. It is what it is. Now to finish this off, look at that. That looked good. Okay, to finish this off, there are a couple things you're going to want to do. I have a little bit of cojita cheese. 
I know, a lot of cheese. And I just put a light sprinkling of that over top, like so. Mexican Parmesan has that nice sharp flavor. And then we're gonna add some paste piccani sauce to it because yum. And it will give it that nice fresh, brand new jar, it will give it that nice freshness from the tomato flavor that you're gonna need. I'm using medium, you can use hot if you like it a little spicier. Feel free to throw some sriracha on top of this bad boy, that's good too. Start confusing your flavors, woo hoo. Throw that right in the middle. And then you can just cut it like a pizza and serve it as a side. It's really, really yummy. And I dropped it on the counter, of course I did. You can even add some more salsa to it once it's on your plate. So whatever you want to do. Like I said, you do you. So I'm just going to cut a piece of this, and then I will be with you guys, have a taste. And we will all celebrate together, throw a parade, do all the things. Give me five minutes. Okay, guys, I'm back. See my little piece on my plate here? I'm going to take a quick bite. Looks so good. It smells divine. I'm hoping for that nice kick of spice too. You can even serve this for brunch. Mmm. It really needed that piccani sauce for the freshness of those tomatoes. And I think I'm going to decide it does need a touch more salt. I can really taste that cumin. Mmm. Tastes so good in there. And the spinach. Just know you're getting iron and protein from all that spinach in there and the eggs. I'm definitely going to finish this for breakfast, lunch, brunch, whatever. It's like noon, so whatever. All right. Well, mm, that is so good. You guys have to try it. So if you like this video, please give me thumbs up and share it with your friends. That would be fantastic. Tag me at right Joe Michaels everywhere. If you see the right, you have the right one. And if you didn't like it, I'm sorry. We can try again next week. There's always something interesting and new coming out every Monday. So eat it, make it, enjoy it. And I will see y'all next week. Bye.